when someone comes to speak about prayer, and I'm always scared to death about this, when someone comes to speak about developing intimacy with God, so many times we have an impression that, you know, uh, this person really knows how to do it. And brother and sister, if you find someone who gives you an impression that he knows how to do it, you found someone who really doesn't know how to do it. Sure. <laughs> That's just the essence of the reality. Uh, you know, when God said in the Old Testament, um, the fire must burn continually, continually upon the altar, it's not what happened yesterday or last week or a year ago or any of those kind of things. We are talking about the reality of the freshness of the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why there was manna in the morning. Uh, there was a reason why, uh, why the Old Testament said it was morning, noon, and night. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why Daniel in the Old Testament would three times a day mm -hmm. uh, would just go and seek the face of God. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why Christ in the New Testament, I mean, he was sinless in his birth, supernatural in his life, he was God himself. And I say this with great respect and caution, he didn't have to spend time in prayer. He was mm. God himself. Sure, mm. sure. But he became man mm -hmm. and identified himself with man. And when he became man, he learned obedience by the things that he suffered, the epistle to the Hebrews is saying to us. And he gave us this incredible example uh, of what it means to be indwelt by the Spirit of God, live this Christian life, developing intimacy in the presence of God mm. and really learn what it means to pray. And Mark in his gospel, when he came to us about the life of Christ, you know, the key word, the key word in Mark's gospel is the word uses in the Greek language. And uh, it's the word immediately. And it's very difficult to analyze the gospel of Mark because it's just event after event after event that is taking place in the life of Christ. And you come into the first chapter of Mark's Gospel and you, you discover 24 hours in the life of Christ in one day. And you go through that chapter and you say to yourself, how in the world it is possible for someone to survive a day like this? And yet in the middle of the Gospel of Mark, the Bible says, early in the morning, deep in the night, Christ went into a secret place and where he prayed. And Dr. Campbell Morgan said, it can be translated as it was his daily custom. Mm. Many times early in the morning, many times deep in the night, many times he went into a secret place, and many times he prayed. And so we have this incredible privilege that when Paul said to us in Colossians, the fullness of God dwelleth in Christ, and we are that fullness in him. And, and brother and sister, we've got this incredible uh, inheritance. But I want to be absolutely transparent with you. I don't think we've scratched the surface this weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of things I would like to challenge you about this morning. And I hope I'm right in saying this. I wonder if it is not the possibility that God right here in the city of St. John, for those of you who have been with us since... Uh, Saturday morning, somewhere Friday night, and Saturday, all those hours, and Saturday night and Sunday. I wonder if it's not possible that God can create in us a longing to see Him giving birth to a, something as a movement of prayer in the city. You see, I would love to come into St. John. It doesn't have to be me. You know, I mean, who are we anyway? Uh, <laughs> But I would love to come into this city and do what we did in Moncton uh, in 2009. We brought about 60 churches together for a week of prayer. And we found ourselves climbing underneath the burden of God, morning after morning, evening after evening, and began to pray as churches together. Now, I think it's possible here, but brother and sister, the way it's going to start is when we find a group of people who are willing to begin to pray about it. Mm -hmm. So we have some pastors here that has been uh, with us uh, from Friday night on, and I have indirectly mentioned this to them, 
And so I'm going to do something. Okay, $50. <laughs> <laughs> sure, take a check and put it on your coffee. <laughs> Isn't that awful? So, here, here, here we are. I'm sorry. I don't even know you. What's your name? It should have been Adam. <laughs> so, what, what I'm going to do, uh, and I want you to think about this, because Pastor Andrew and Pastor Dave, who has been walking with us, we're just going to pray about this. And we have about seven to 9,000 people all over the world that are praying for us every day. Mm -hmm. And they are carrying what we are trying to do, or what God is trying to do, and us being the vessels. Uh, mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to send a list like this around with my little black notebook. And what I want you to do, if you are interested <clears throat> in beginning to pray for the possibility of a prayer encounter here in St. John uh, in the future, it could be, if we pray this thing through, it could be within, where are we now? Maybe the fall of next year, God willing. You say, why does we have to wait so long? Oh, brother and sister, the Bible says the preparation of the heart belongs to God. Mm -hmm. Mm. How dare we walk into something that God hasn't prepared? Amen. Mm. And so, mm. what we are going to do, I'm going to ask you to put your name down, <coughs> your email address, uh, your telephone number, and I'm going to give it to these pastors. And they are, going <coughs> excuse me, they are going to coordinate this. And maybe once every three months, or once a month, um, they will be in touch with you and say, it. we're having a prayer encounter, we're having a prayer Sunday. <coughs> we're doing it on a Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And we are coming together for prayer. Mm -hmm. We can have a time of worship, and <clears throat> someone will share with us uh, something about prayer. And then we're going to break up in groups, and we're going to begin to pray yeah. about the possibility for a prayer summit, and pray, begin to pray for the city. So uh, <clears throat> that's, what I, that's what I want to do. And so I'm going to send my, this around with my pen. You need to put down your email address uh, and your telephone number, maybe the church that you are from, and then we just go systematically around. I'm sending this pen. Now, this pen came out of New Zealand. Yeah. And uh, this pen is, please make sure Gerard get me back. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, that's what we are going to, going to do. And so, uh, let's just start here. This gentleman has become my friend. Do any of you know him? Yes. yes. Okay. Do you think he's unorganized? No. Yeah. Oh, you, you, not, you, you haven't been with it. <laughs> so I'm going to start. Oh, I want to give him all my material. He doesn't know this yet. I want to give him all my material and say, my brother, can you put all of us together to me, and we want to put it into a little book form that we can give to people. So, and you, now you can't say no. <laughs> there you are. So this is, this is what, what we are going to do. Now listen, we only have an hour and a half. So, and we pray together and spend this time. 12, 12 o'clock there are pastors coming, we're spending some time uh, this way. And what we want to do this morning, I want to, Adam, Keith, Adam, <laughs> I got his name now. So what I want to do this morning, <clears throat> I want to explore with you the whole concept of the Old Testament as it relates to prayer. And you know, I really struggle with things. I thought this morning, oh, I wish we would have had time to do this. Just to throw this open and say, those of you who have been in all the sessions, do you have any question about when it comes to the concept of developing intimacy with God? But I know if we're going to do that, I don't know how far we will get with the material. But what I want to do is I want to explore the Old Testament. So mm -hmm. let's pray together. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we, <coughs> we want to thank you this morning because you have been very gracious and you have been very precious to us. We want to thank you that just in a matter of of three days, <clears throat> not, not even three days, the 24 hours that became Saturday and the 24 hours that became Sunday <clears throat> and Friday night when we came together and 
now again here this morning, in such a short period of time, have you been allowed, have you allowed us to <clears throat> be able to cover so much of amazing and incredible material as it relates to prayer? And yet, Father, uh, we confess today in your presence that there is a sense in which we know really so little. That the inadequacy of our understanding of really <clears throat> who God is and what He's able to do uh, is so limited because of the depth of the effect that the, the depravity of sin has had upon us. And yet, we are so thankful that you said to us in your word, if a son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. Mm. Thank you that you said to us, by faith we are saved. Mm. Thank you, Father God, that faith without works is dead. Mm. And yet saving faith works. Mm. And we are so thankful today that we have been able to learn. And I don't think that there is anyone here this morning, in this little gathering, and I've been overwhelmed with probably around 30 people that would come on a Monday morning mm -hmm. of all times. And God, you know, I stood here this morning and I felt in my heart, how is it that we haven't planned this thing better and, and spend the next three or four mornings like this together, exploring Scripture and just climb underneath the burden of God and, and spend the evenings together and systematically dissecting the burden of God and and ask you to teach us the language of prayer mm -hmm. uh, so that we would become men and women saturated <coughs> uh, with the understanding of persevering and prevailing and, and, and then sometimes agonizing under the depth of the burden of God. Thank you that your word is said unto us that we need to keep on looking at Jesus, <coughs> the author and the finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. Thank you that you have said to us, let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. Thank you for that mili military connotation and concept of the understanding that when the writer to the Hebrews said, let us run with patience the race. That this is a military term. That it really means that we need to hold courageously on the consistent fire. And Father, we know this morning that prayer is not necessary. A weapon but prayer is a battlefield mm. and that sometimes the casualties are high and, <clears throat> and the bullets are flying and, and we find ourselves in the level of the trenches when we're facing the reality of the onslaughts of the evil one and yet God you have said to us in your word that when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord shall rise up a standard against him Thank you that you said to us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and the powers of mm. darkness, and that we are facing the reality. Mm. Now, Father, we're not looking for a demon behind every bush, but we are so conscious that you said that we are not ignorant of the devices of the evil one. Mm. And we are aware this morning that the enemy of our souls absolutely mm. hate a Christian who have learned the secret of climbing underneath the burden of God and systematically dissecting this burden of God and pray this thing through to God because he realized that what that Christian will do is that he will discover the depth of the will of God and as he pray according to the will of God God will be able to work in his own heart and he will do that which God wants him to do and see the eternal fruit of that which is relevant and real in his relationship with God. Father, we have this little time here this morning. And oh, we want to learn more of the language of prayer. And yet, God, some of the greatest ways that we can learn this is when we actually do it. And spend time with you. And, and ask you to help us to persevere and understanding what the scripture says as it become part of our lives and we I find ourselves praying through the scriptures and so as it create the fullness of your spirit in our hearts and a spirit of prayer and a spirit of faith and a 
and a confidence and a sense of reality that eventually you can stand back in amazement and recognize that this God that we are serving is a prayer on sin God. Mm -hmm. Bless your word this morning. Mm -hmm. We want to be like those two disciples on the way to Emos. That when you departed out of their presence, mm -hmm. <coughs> that they turned to one another and said, Did not our hearts burn within us when he spoke to us on the way? Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Give us the burning heart mm -hmm. for Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 I'd like you to turn with me in your Bible, if you will, 